Welcome everyone. Welcome to Love Alchemy. I am your host, Tamara Hansen, and I want to thank you for being here, for listening, and for taking this self-love journey. As I've said so many times before, this self-love journey is probably the most important journey that you will ever be on. This relationship with yourself, strengthening the relationship with yourself is one of the most important tasks that you can take on. And as we do more podcasts and open up to the varying degrees of self-love, of loving the self, of divine love, of coming into who we truly are, we will begin to see this. It will become more apparent to us how this relationship with ourselves, the love for ourselves, is imperative, especially in today's world. So again, thank you for joining me. I want to mention that I do have a couple of online courses. Uh, One is called Find Your Zen. So it's basically a meditation for beginners. But even if you're not a beginner, sometimes it's nice to uh, learn new techniques in meditation. And the other one is Awakening to love. And that is about self-love. That is a very um, basic um, kind of first level foundational type of course. They're both two hours long. And you can take a look at those on my website at www.lovealchemywellness.ca. I also offer distance Reiki energy healing sessions, and I kind of do them a little bit differently than what um, what many people have experienced in the past. So there's a lot of bringing in of extra help um, from the more divine realms, uh, bringing in um, sacred geometry in some cases, sound healing. Also, um, uh, intuition is brought into this, and I just relay those uh, that information to people uh, during the session or and or after the session. So, check that out. That's also on my website, and you can just go peruse the website and take a look at what there is to offer. So, on we go here. Today's topic is about loving yourself even when you don't want to and this can be really difficult thing to to do because when you are in that space of not loving you because you have done something that you knew you could have done better Maybe you've done something to hurt someone or hurt yourself. Maybe you did something wrong at work or failed a test, made a decision that maybe wasn't quite in your best interest. Just things like that. And I believe you know what I'm talking about. It can be really difficult to love ourselves during those times when we kind of feel like we've we've screwed up, when we've um, just didn't do the right thing or we knew better. So how do we love ourselves during these times of screwing up, of not feeling so great about ourselves? And that, that can be a long process in some cases because we are so used to beating ourselves up, to being self-deprecating. And maybe on some level we believe that 
being self-deprecating or the self-flagellation is because we should suffer. We feel we should suffer and we continue to suffer until somehow, some way, miraculously, it just feels better. But sometimes that ta- that day doesn't come where where we do feel better about what happened in the past, and then suddenly it's twenty years later, and we're still hanging on to something that we should have let go of a long time ago, and maybe we forgot what it was, but we're still acting or behaving from that point in time. So we can be judgmental of ourselves and really stare at those human failings that we believe that we've totally messed up on. And yeah, we are human. We are... um, We tend to have failures. We tend to do things that maybe we could have done better with. There are disappointments and we're we're probably the biggest judge of ourselves. We're harder on ourselves than we are on anybody else. So how we see our flaws and the flaw of others it's that's kind of how we're perceiving life because now we're looking at flaws looking at how we should have behaved or how people should have behaved when really we're just kind of all on this same path of trying to understand things and kind of trying to figure it all out so This can cause a lot of disagreements, disharmony, arguments in our lives, um, maybe hatred for others or for ourselves, and expecting others to act a certain way so we can feel better, or wishing we could act a certain way to make ourselves feel better. And it can be tough, and it can be hard. And it could be raw and and rough to get to that space of love. Maybe relationships fall apart. Someone leaves us. There's abandonment, betrayal. How others treat us can throw us into this mindset of unworthiness, of thinking, what's wrong with me? I'm not enough. No wonder that person doesn't want me because I'm bad, a mess etc. So why do we have a hard time loving ourselves? What is actually happening? Well, in my viewpoint, I believe that, firstly, that it's been taught out of us, that we have been taught to not love ourselves, not to give ourselves the attention, the love, the respect that we we might show to somebody else. And basically, we were unlearning. There There was this unlearning of living in the heart and moving mostly into the head. And we've forgotten this loving essence. We've forgotten who we are. And this just didn't happen you know recently this is something that has happened over a very long period of time because this is like we're talking centuries of damage and then it's handed down ancestrally from person to person family to family generation to generation and then here you are trying to figure out the relationship with yourself or not paying attention or nurturing the relationship with yourself, that love for yourself, because you've been shown, it's been demonstrated to you by others who didn't love themselves or didn't feel highly of themselves. 
that you should behave in the same way. And those people before you, maybe your parents, guardians, whoever, they learnt it from somebody before them. And then before them, those people learnt it. And it just kept going. So we can kind of see generationally, historically, how this can affect us. And I do believe it's all programming and thinking, a way of thinking, how we've kind of lost touch with that sacredness inside us, with understanding that we should be honoring and holding reference for this person that is us, body, mind, spirit, all levels. Now, you know that I do say a lot about how we are divine. That is our true nature. That is who we truly are. That our divine essence, love, we are divine love. That is who we are. And that can be very hard to understand or believe because it is kind of foreign to us to to really grasp that concept. And it will take time for you to begin to understand that, that at the very core of everything, you are love. You are this divine love. You are divine essence. And when we begin to realize that, really understand that, then things will become clearer for us. So being in this physical body and operating from a place of doubt, uncertainty, hatred, anger, thinking and believing that we are not all that, that we aren't enough, that we have to prove our lovability. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that in your lifetime where you felt like you had to prove your lovability, that you had to work for the love and respect. You had to do certain things to be deemed worthy of that nurturing, that nourishment. So if you have, ask yourself this question. Why why do I need to look to others or prove to others that I am deserving and worthy of love and respect? Ask yourself that question. Because we all do it. We all tend to look to others to show us our own worthiness, our own enoughness of whatever it is that we are looking for. We look outside of ourselves to see evidence of that because we don't trust our own judgment of who we are. So of course it feels good to get kudos or rewards or accolades from others to say that we did a good job or that was awesome or you are lovable, you are deserving. But even when somebody says that, that high, that experience of what we just felt by what they said, it only lasts so long. It's kind of like a hit. 
this chemical hit to bring us up. And then we drop back down again because something happens, something triggers us, something uh, we feel foolish about, we don't feel worthy about, and then we are down in that lower frequency level and then we search for the next hit of feeling good of trying to get somebody's attention somebody's permission that we are enough somebody's respect or love and the fact is that you can't go looking for that outside of yourself you have to go within. So like I said, we are talking about centuries of damage of ancestral programming handed down to each generation. And now here we are, like I said, today, um, just haven't learned how to love ourselves. And not really sure what that looks like exactly. And I know that we, it might appear that loving ourselves includes bubble baths and having time to chill out and coffee with a friend or reading a book or doing those lovely things for ourselves. And that is certainly part of it. But this actually goes so much deeper than what we are aware of. This loving ourselves is, is about reconnecting, rediscovering who we really are. And that's why this is so important about loving ourselves even when things aren't looking that great when we're having a bad day when we really screwed up loving ourselves in spite of it all so how do we go back to that how do we begin to understand that how do we love ourselves even though we don't really want to? Even though we don't feel like it or feel deserving of it? We can really get down on ourselves, really feel um, kind of in the dumps. Like our frequency is lower. We think about what we did wrong and then we go over everything throughout our own lives and look at everything that we've done wrong and, and beat ourselves up about it. So I think first off, what has to be addressed here is that we are on a journey, a journey of self-discovery and this self-discovery is ongoing because we are learning and growing and experiencing life and as we experience these things we grow and expand now growth and expansion comes when we can look at situations where we felt that we could have done better or did different did differently and look at them as not a means to beat ourselves up but where we can just love ourselves even more. So this is kind of an inner child work because a lot of these things 
these triggers, um, a lot of that stuff come from childhood when we are learning and growing and we're these sponges just taking in everything all around us. So a big part of that is healing that inner child because what we are learning during those very formative years, we can, if we haven't dealt with maybe certain uh, situations that caused trauma in our lives or um, situations uh, with friends or family members, uh, teachers, priests or other authority figures, if we haven't dealt with those things, then they are going to appear later on in life in a different situation. And then we're going to beat ourselves up about it because we, will, we won't feel deserving enough or worthy enough. So we really need to look at some of these triggers, situations from the past. And now I'm not saying that everything is from childhood, but those, are, those years are very, very important time in our lives because we are learning and growing and as we get older, we begin to filter out and sort through what we feel is important and what we feel isn't important. So I'll just give you an example of uh, some inner child stuff that came up for me and that I hadn't addressed. And, you know, I can't remember if I mentioned this before in another podcast, but uh, it will, a little bit of it will be in the book that I am currently finishing and hopefully will have published here by the new year. So this situation happened when I went to Vipassana meditation workshop and meditated for 10 hours a day for 10 days and, um, and there were things that came up for me from the past, from childhood that I had thought I dealt with or kind of forgot and or I didn't think that it had affected me that that much. But apparently it had because it came up strong. And one thing that I will share with you about this was one day in my room, and this was during a time when you could uh, either meditate in your room or in the meditation hall. There were certain times where you had to meditate in the meditation hall, but this particular time you were free to meditate in either spot. So... I started to question things, why things were happening, why I was feeling a certain way, why certain um, bodily ailments were still lingering for me. And what I realized was that my little self, my young girl self, my inner child was still waiting with a sword and shield, waiting to protect, waiting for the next shoe to drop, waiting for something to happen. She was on high alert and had been like that for a very long time. And she was the protectress. She was the defender. She was ready to slay the dragons fact was that she didn't need to slay any more dragons. There were no dragons to slay. And it was okay. 
So in that meditation, I had to go in and talk to her and love her up and nurture her and tell her that she was no longer needed to protect. She was okay to to be a child, to be a young girl, and that she was loved and she is lovable and that I was never going to leave her side ever again. I was there for her. So when we can go in and do a little bit of inner child healing. Now remember, sometimes when we are doing that inner child healing, and maybe we'll do another podcast on this, um, a full podcast on this down the road. But remember that everything that you are experiencing when looking at the inner child, when um, talking to the inner child, those things have happened in the past. And they can no longer touch you or hurt you. So we deal with it. We love up that inner child. We allow that inner child to to feel the love, to feel the care, the nurturing, the nourishment that we can give them. And realize by loving up that inner child, we are also giving that love back to ourselves, giving ourselves permission to love, to feel respect for ourselves, to be respected. There is nothing that we need to do to prove our lovability, to prove that we deserve respect, because it's already a part of us. So when we are looking at um, loving ourselves, even when we don't want to, when it's been a shitty week, then we have to go within and look at things from a different perspective. And like I said at the beginning, that we are on a journey of self-discovery, something that never ends because we are learning more and more and more about ourselves about this human that is also a spiritual being that is also part of divine essence divine being source energy god goddess whatever title you want to put on it we are the universe experiencing itself meaning that in this humanness and with all these human failings and these errors and judgments, as long as we are expanding and growing and looking at things from a different perspective, every time we experience a situation in our lives, contrasting situation where we feel we screwed up or could have done better, then those are the moments when we choose differently. When we love ourselves and respect ourselves enough to become so much more than who we were when we did something wrong or hurt somebody or screwed up. 
So whatever that is, choose to rise above that. Now, I don't believe that there are lessons per se, or that we're handed out lessons. And I think that the only lesson is understanding our own frequency, our own energy, understanding who we are, what makes us tick, what are those emotions, those triggers, those uh, thought processes, get to know ourselves, our patterns, because a lot of times we are unaware. So we bring more awareness to ourselves, bring more awareness to who we are. And then when there is a situation that arises where we could have done better, we take a look at it, we assess it, we heal it, we determine, okay, what did I get from this experience? What was it that I needed to learn from this experience? Where's my vibration? What am I attracting exactly? What am I bringing into this world with my frequency the way it is right now? And then determine what it is you want to do differently. So if you want to be more loving and more respectful and less judgmental and more caring and nourishing and nurturing and maybe help humanity or whatever it is that is going to change within you, then you make that your mission. So just for an example, recently... I'd seen some, I don't know, weird video um, about this daycare home that was scaring the children at the daycare by wearing these scary masks. It was just, watching the video was uh, horrifying. I, I can't imagine these kids, what they were feeling. And seeing that, I just thought to myself, I want to make sure that I am always leveling up to unconditional love, that I'm always doing better, that I'm always loving and caring and nourishing more every single day. And yes, I am going to have my bad days. I am going to have those days where I'm judgy and I'm maybe not so loving and caring to others or to myself. Yes, those days will, will be there. But as long as those days grow shorter or few and far between, and if I can always remember that if I'm faced with a moment where maybe I'm not being so loving to myself or to someone else that I can switch that up because I've trained myself, programmed myself to now come from a place from a love more and more every single day. So that is what I'm saying to you, my friends, that on those days when you don't really want to love yourself for whatever reason, begin to program or create a new habit of loving yourself. So when you recognize that you are not being so loving of yourself or maybe not so loving to others, recognize it. And it's okay to have a day of venting or where you're just just not feeling it because you cannot uh, move up that vibrational scale when you are feeling super low. You can't jump up to that feeling of love. You got to work your way up. 
But the more you work your way up that scale of feeling better, that um, the amount of time in between feeling crappy and feeling better will shorten and you will get up to that level easily and quickly because now you are training yourself to do so. So basically, you are training yourself, programming yourself to switch on and into that love vibe. So pay attention. Go within. Choose differently. Choose to love yourself. To nourish and nurture yourself. To not beat yourself up so much. And to recognize where it is that you want to make some adjustments. And that's all that is. This is, we are constantly on this journey. You just constantly become more, become, um, just step more into love, more into caring for yourself. Maybe your crappy day was because you just weren't giving yourself the attention and kindness that you needed. Maybe you just need to have a nice bath and go to sleep and wake up with a grateful heart and appreciation. Sometimes when we aren't feeling that great Having a little bit of gratitude and appreciation will begin to help us to reach a higher frequency. So that, my friends, is essentially how you love yourself when you're not really feeling like it. It's all about making the effort and choosing differently and being kind to yourself because when we love and nurture ourselves and when we're kind and respect ourselves we will have an easier time allowing that love and respect to flow into others and begin to see other people having their own struggles having their own journey, understanding their own beautiful divine selves. So let's finish this talk with a meditation. So get into a comfortable position just for a few minutes. You can sit or lie down. Make sure that you will not be disturbed. Just allow your body to shift, stretch. Just take a deep breath in and exhale it out. And then inhale again and exhale out. Just allow your body to relax, your mind to relax, those muscles, everything to relax. Now place your hand over your heart center, right in the center of your chest. You can place both hands there if you like. And I want you to just tap into the energy of that heart center, of that love that resonates for you. I know it can be hard to tap into that, to feel it, to understand it. When you've been really tough on yourself, 
but just know that that love is there. It always has been. You can't get rid of it. It's not going anywhere. You've only hidden it away for a little while. Maybe it made you feel vulnerable. Maybe it made you feel unprotected. Maybe you just didn't want to feel hurt or hurt it anymore because it had already been hurt so many times. But bring that love back. See it as a beautiful light glowing in the center of your chest. Allowing it to just begin to grow and become beautiful and large and allow it to just shine out all around you. This is who you are, this love, this beautiful love. You are so much this and so worthy of it. You are more than enough. Understand this about yourself. Get used to feeling that. Anticipate it. Expect it. Because it is yours. Just continue focusing on that heart center and growing that love. Appreciating it. Showing gratitude for the experience that got you to this point. You are beautiful and amazing. I'll just sit here or lay here for a little bit longer, basking in this warm glow of loving light. Allow yourself to be, to be present. To be love. And just breathe. Thank you all for being here. Namaste.